Hello, here is Bibi Walker. Welcome to my channel again. Because of the last survey, you know, results, most of you, over 55%, wanted to continue our topic about the um, connection computer to keyboard and software versus hardware solution. So I decided to make the continuation of this video. So today we will compare the topic in very wide area. We, not on, we will be not only talking about keyboards and PC, but we will be talking in general about software versus hardware solutions. So if you are interested in, just sit comfortable and let's go forward. All right, so at the super beginning, how you to compare the hardware versus software solution, because this is a topic for our today's video. We will do pros and cons on this area. We will remind you some background about those previous video, but if you haven't watched it, I recommend you to watch it first. The link is of course, as always in the description or in this card or whatever it's called in YouTube. So how we will be comparing software versus hardware solution, because if you are new on this, let's call it market, and you are wondering which gear should I buy to start producing music, and you just open YouTube, find some tutorials on the internet, or ask people on the website, there is a lot of, lot of information. And maybe if you play some keyboard instruments, some arrangers, so digital workstation, and you want to do something more, you know, modern, more likely, you just looking for some support and there is a lot of so many you know different approaches that people have been usually really really lost in this area so it's very difficult to compare this and to answer this question straight with one answer with one precise answer so i decided to you know talk in two different, let's call it domains of the music production or music performing. So basically we will be talking about live performances and studio production in those two areas, which sometimes are, you know, together, are combined together. But uh, on those two domains, we could use both hardware and software solution and how what do I? Um, what is behind the software and hardware solution? We will of course go forward in a moment. It's not. Uh, it, it's also not about digital versus analog. It's a complete another topic, great topic. But if you are interested about analog versus digital, please uh, give me a comment, and we could also discuss this topic. Uh, in this in this video, we will be mostly talk about the digital. Uh, the instruments that have digital interfaces, they could be analog instruments like synth, analog synth, but with digital interfaces that allows us to connect those hardware or software devices. So this is the, you know, first, you know, mention about how we will be looking on this problem, because there is a lot of situation that you could have in your life. Okay, so let's go forward. So if we talk about live performance, uh, live performance, which is you take some gear on a stage or you do live streaming, it's also a kind of live performance. So if you're talking about uh, making music live without post-production, doing something in the software or mixers on, and, and producing in, let's call it studio. So the live performance is when everything is done, sorry, uh, when everything is done on a, a stage in the same time. Okay, so what is important if we're talking about live performance? And in two, two aspects, the sound engine and live looping and mixing live. So basically the first question is about sound engine. So it means who will generate the sound. And it could be a software like VST plugin, which I'm referring in this previous video, or the hardware engine, a hardware instrument, some kind of box, physical way, or with keyboard or without keyboard, depending on it has its own controllers for playing live or not, because you could use MIDI routing and for example, a MIDI controller to play something, but the actual device which produces the sound. And the second thing, which is important on performing live, 
especially if you're using Looper, is who will control the loops. So if you have a software, a DAW software who will control the loops, or you have a special hardware like hardware looper, looper, groovy box, what is some, some kind of this. And the other stuff is you, if you are looping, if you are looping a MIDI commands, or if you are looping uh, audio tracks. The depending, the, 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 let's call it the difference between MIDI tracks and audio, please check the previous video. I don't want to, you know, repeat myself again. Okay, so about the mixing, if you are talking about performing live on a stage, do you have an external sound engineer who perform your mix or just you are your own uh, software engineer that produces mix? So this, uh, the, those aspects should be, you know, taken into consideration if you are talking pros and cons of different approach. Okay, so, and then we go to studio production. So in a studio production, we got actually the same problem. So the same consideration. The first and the most important, in, in my opinion, is the sound engine. So basically, who will generate sound? If you sit in your home, in a desk or a mixing board, and you are trying to compose some music to make some arrangement for yourself or just as the you know external work to someone else, you have two options in sound engine. Basically, you could buy, uh, use a software. So buy a plugin and use a software for synth music or just you know some kind of rumpler in a software. Or you just you can take some uh, hardware device that you have. It could be a Ranger, it could be digital piano, whatever you have in your house, and to use it to produce this arrangement. And the other. Next thing uh, is, mm, is, is, is the notes, the MIDI editing, recording, layering, because in the arrangement there is much more tracks and channels than only one soloing part. So usually we have, let's call it drums, we have a bass line, we have some rhythmic parts or chord progression by the instrument that, but de depending of course of the style and what kind of music you are producing, but you could have I don't know, five, six, or even much more, more if you do or orchestra, uh, symphonic orchestra arrangement, there is a lot of layers, instruments, over instruments, and so on. So uh, the question is, if you use a hardware or software to make this, you know, uh, put everything together, so synchronizing tracks, uh, layering them, which uh, voices are mapped to each channel, and so on and so on. It's, there is a lot of things uh, because you could use uh, MIDI data for those tracks and send it somewhere else, or you can just use the audio tracks and mix them live. Uh, also with software or hardware. So at the beginning, we are only going through some problems and stuff that you could met if you. Uh, making your final decision because this video is actually about uh, which solution, which uh, you know approach will be best for you. And to answer that question, we, we should go through those all uh, things and you know taking them into consideration. Okay, so the last one is the final mix, mastering and export because at the end of the day, you need to export your song. You need to make your arrangement completed, rendered into one file, audio file, WAV file, or MP3 file, so you could upload to the internet, to Spotify, to any other streaming platform, or just give someone to use on a backing track, depending where are you producing those stuff, maybe as a backing track for the video, or, you know, just for the general entertainment music. Uh, so it also, uh, there is a question, because you can make this final uh, this baking, this render on a computer or use a hardware mixer. So there is two, two possible in here also. And combining those things together would lead us to conclusion. Okay, so as we have you discussed the chapters, the significant stuff, let's go now to details about sound engine. The first stuff is the sound engine, 
which means who produced the sound. As you may know from this previous video, there are several methods of generating sound, electronic sound, of course. It could be synthesizer sound, so produced by the electronic systems that thanks to the theory of sound generation using waves, LFOs, and a lot of parameters, envelopes, ADSR, there's also a video on my channel about ADSR, LFOs, and so on, so you could check the description. So they could be produced in the synthetic way, so the synthesizer is a piece of device or hardware or software that produces sound, and could be rumpled sound, so pre-recorded from analog versions, like someone is playing the classical guitar, someone else is recording it and then using to you know recreate other notes because thanks to the pitch shifting and algorithms both in hardware and software we could change the pitch on the sound for example the abc uh, depending on the transformation we could actually generate any sound of any scale uh, starting for example from c of course and there are, it is, the topic is much more sophisticated about rumpling because there's a multi-layering, velocity change, and a huge topic. So, so let's call and let's keep focus to the software versus hardware uh, sound engines. Okay, so if you ask, if you, if you watch internet, a lot of people are buying a MIDI keyboard like this, for example. They're buying, they're taking their, they are taking their laptop and they use VST plugins to produce sounds. What kind of VST plugins do we have? Uh, basically, here are some examples. Of course, it's not the, any sponsored video. I'm not recommending anything, but on my personal, you know, experience when I'm watching some stuff over the internet, you get a lot of plugins, VST software that produce sound, could be uh, Avenger, Analog Lab for more synthetic sound, Halion from Steinberg, which is included. Most of this VST are included and or given by or for free if you buy a, a MIDI controller or buy a DLW software. Um, but they also have some romplet sound like this UV Grand Piano or Modern Strings. So it's not only about modern electronic music, it could be also used to produce very classical music genres. Even the symphonic orchestra, there are plugins for symphonic orchestra. So those are the plugins that generate sound in a software array. And what are the advantages and disadvantages of, generate, of, of sound engine uh, made on a software? So, okay, first, advantage so we get a lot of instrument that we could find over the internet we could buy some of them are for free so there is a tones tones hundreds of thousand maybe instrument if it on each such vst plugin the presets are you know prepared by sound engineers and they are sold or given for free as the expansion pack so you have a lot of you know as long as the producer supports the software, you get a lot of samples, a lot of instruments, and they are very easy to upgrade because you can, you know, download from internet, click, click, and everything is okay. Uh, it's much cheaper for start, yes, because if you are buying, for example, a MIDI keyboard and you have a for free, uh, let's, this is, uh, you know, uh, light version always with some limitations, but for start, you get some stuff for free. And as long as you have a laptop or PC computer or Mac, which is, which is capable of have enough power, CPU power, we go to the CPU in a moment, it's very important. But if you have it, it's much cheaper than the hardware solution where you need to buy some stuff. So in the software used as sound engine, you get a lot of demos, a lot of free instruments because sometimes you download it from internet and then you can be it could be used for you know try version quite sometimes a few weeks or something like this or or even they are free i mean you are limited to number of presets or you cannot edit them inside but mostly for general use and playing with music the capable of so for the starters 
Very good. Okay, what are the disadvantages of sound generation? Well, of sound engine in using software? Well, first, that they require a computer to operate, so you cannot produce any sound using the MIDI keyboard, which I've shown you uh, seconds ago, because it's only a controller. Everything is done on a computer, so you need to buy a computer, and this computer must be quite powerful if you want to make complex sound uh, generation. I mean, some uh, presets are, um, let's call it, easy to render, do not require so so per so um, r hardware resources of your computer, and some of them are very demanding. They need a lot of stuff to work perfectly, I mean to work properly, because <laughs> there is a lot of stuff which I have bolded in here. We have the software engine. And this is the most, the biggest disadvantage of software synth. They're called latency and dropouts and crackles. Because now we are going to the mo most important stuff about the software engine, sound engine on software. So, in digital processing, you need a lot of CPU power and operating memory, RIM memory, so some the physical memory to produce the sound in digital way. There is a lot of computation in general. And those computations are done in some piece of cache, a piece of you know memory which is called the buffer. And the buffer, the bigger buffer you have, the your your the mm, the less power you need to produce sound without glitches and, and crackles and dropouts. But if you increase the buffer, you are increasing the latency. So if you hit the key, you need to wait a few milliseconds or uh, even 100 milliseconds in <laughs> some <laughs> crazy conditions. And this latency is horrible because it uh, do not allows you to play in rhythm you get complete mess up with the tempo. Please check the video about latency in FL Studio where I'm go showing some trips and tricks of how you could do it. But always, if we are talking about the sound in software, generating sound using the software, there is always a problem with latency versus dropouts, crackles. So, because if you set the buffer too small, you will have this hissing sound, dropouts, so there will be this crackles, whatever you call it. This is very disturbing stuff because you're playing something, you add another instrument or track, and now it starts to sound horrible. And then you need to increase the buffer again, and you're increasing again, and maybe you get to big latency, so you want to decrease again, and you are working with this. So, this the problem with latency and dropouts is very, very, very disturbing if you are talking about sound engine using software. Another stuff is connected with your computer in general because it's less reliable. Um, basically, I started Cubase, there was some Windows update, and now I cannot run it, I need to make some changes, etc., etc. There is always problem with malware, CPU limits, uh, because on the operating system a lot of stuff are happen in the background. You cannot see, but there are some process that downloads updates or there is another update, it blocks your Azure drivers, something's happened, you need to restart and so on and so on. And now let's think about live performance. You're going with your laptop, you're opening, you're connecting keyboard, you're happy to play, you're starting your Ableton Live, whatever you have, you just no, 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 again, the software update, it's horrible. And believe me, <laughs> in a live stage performance, this could be a nightmare. Yes, it could be a nightmare. Because there is a lot of things that could happen with your computer during, you know, everyday use. So I recommend to use completely separated computer, which is used only to music production and nothing more. 
you cannot use it for work or entertainment and everything. So install soft software. This software could be conflicted with your software uh, for music or just consume a lot of CPU power and you are dying with this and you only have, uh, you know, this <laughs> horrible thing. So less reliable software glitches malware. This is actually great disadvantage of this. Setup is time consuming. As you can see, I talk a lot of problems that could occur here. What could you do with the Azure uh, uh, setup and so on. So basically it's true. Setup of software in a computer is time consuming and requires tech skills because you need to set up Azure drivers, install drivers, set up output devices, input devices, start software, register software, do some uh, electronic license uh, again, so updates. So there is a lot of things that you need to do before you are ready to play. And I know that musicians are not the engineers. They're soft, they are not software engineers of tech specs. Some of them are probably, but not everyone. And not everyone wants to read the manuals, ask people how to set up these of dots. So there is a lot of things that you have to do uh, with your computer before you will be able to play. So, yeah, let's go to hardware then. Okay, so for me, personally, the biggest advantages of hardware solutions for sound creation is the reality, reliability. They are very highly reliable. And why does this happen? Because in the operating system, you get a lot of software and the computation power is split between, uh, you know, different tasks. Because you, you probably are streaming, recording, streaming, like in this video, I'm, re I'm showing you some uh, slides and capturing. So a lot of things happen in a computer. There's a lot of background process that consume energy and there's CPU power. Of course, CPU is very powerful, but it is divided to many tasks. But in hardware solution, your CPU, because there is, all, oh, there is also some kind of CPU or DSP, so digital signal processing, but actually there is also an electronic uh, module. CPU is programmed but it is designed to do only this particular tasks. And there is no software update going in the background and so on and so on. So uh, even if the device has less CPU power, it's less powerful, it's designed to do exactly what it's designed to do. So it's very reliable. It has a high performance DSP, so it always be able to produce sound without glitches, without crackles, dropouts, or with great latency. So if you, of course, choose a chip instrument uh, with pure, uh, with poor uh, quality, it could have big latency in connection to computer, but this is constant. This limits, this advantage or disadvantage are constant. You are 100% sure that if you buy a keyboard, let's call it Roland, you are buying Roland, you are buying Korg, model, PA, whatever, and every single Korg, PA, whatever, will be playing the same, will be reliable in the same level. There is no such a way like my software works and, and on the other computer it doesn't work because we have this designed to do exactly what it's need to do. So it's plug and play. You plug, you don't need technical skills, you start your instrument and you play. You don't need to install drivers, configure drivers, whatever you call it. So it's pretty easy to use in music, for music. You don't need to be tech geek to do this. There is also a lot of instruments sold uh, if, you, if you 
pick a, let's call it mm, known vendor. So the community behind those instruments are usually big, so you could find help if you need this. Uh, there is much more software on the market than the hardware instruments on the market. This is my personal opinion without any <laughs> scientific research, but if you take a look on the possible problems about hardware versus possible problems about software, I'm sure that the number of problems are much more shorter in the terms of hardware solutions. Okay, so the, we know what are the advantages of hardware, So, but what are the disadvantages? Yes, because uh, if people are choosing software and hardware is so good, why they are choosing software still? You may be wondering, yeah. So let's go for the disadvantages. Well, so the voices, the instrument, the effects, the stuff that you could do with your hardware, sound, engine, is limited to the producer's supply. You actually, it's not open source. You cannot make your own instrument, install new VST plugin, and yeah, I got my new voices in my Korg, Roland, Yamaha keyboard. No, you cannot do this. You can, of course, buy some expansion pack from the producers, as long as he support this model, but it also requires some money and it's limited to the, you know, will, goodwill. They will, you know, publish some expansion pack or not. The another disadvantage is, is that the model could become discontinued, like in Yamaha PSR 975, which I get. You know, uh, it's discontinued, so you cannot buy a new one, it's an obvious way, but for some time there won't be new expansion pack for this model and producers will try to force people to upgrade hardware, yes? But the cost, the overall cost of the hardware is in most of the cases higher than using software, if we compare the quality. Because to have a nice synth, digital or analog, versus the software that produce the same quality uh, synth, you need to pay much more for hardware. It's unbiased. I mean, it's 100% per sure, per sure that you need to pay more for hardware because there is a lot of research to produce, manufacture, and even from the logistic way, you need to pay more because the hardware costs more. The biggest advantages of software is that everybody could write a software if, if he is a programmer with some knowledge about software, uh, about the sound generation theory. So there is a framework even you can write a software and you know releasing new sound, new possible and so on. The CPU are more powerful. We got more faster hard disk drive. We got faster memory, so we could increase the the possibilities. In hardware, we are not. The another disadvantage of hardware is that usually they require some space. <laughs> you need a bigger studio. You buy a MOG synthesizer, then piano, then keyboard, then new keyboard, or whatever, drum, sta drum station, looper maybe, uh, or some groovy box, whatever, and it all requires space and it's not so portable. A uh, laptop and a MIDI keyboard, like the smaller MIDI keyboard, could, you know, be stored in a backpack. <laughs> I don't know is the backpack for 66 or even more keys uh, keyboard. You need to have special box on it. Probably a big car to transport all of this. So those are the disadvantage and advantage of both software and hardware stuff. Let's go forward. So here are some examples about, I was showing you uh, it already, uh, but so there's a lot of VST plugins software that you can buy. It's like an App Store or Google Play. You just finding a vendor, checking the reviews. Sometimes you find a trial and you are downloading it, install it, and you are happy to play with your DLW software or just playing live, like in my video, 
when I was playing the analog lab using the uh, Kawai digital piano. Please check this video if you haven't watched it already. Okay, so hardware sound engines, because everybody uh, knows how looks the software uh, engines, if we are talking about the modern music, but what about the hardware sound engines? That they have to be keyboards? Not always, not always. Uh, the first example is the Cork Minilog. It's an analog and digital synth with MIDI support, so it could be used to play live, but you could also connect it to computer and use the sound engine from it. The another is my Kawai KDP. It's a digital piano, so it has sound engine because it has speakers, it produces sounds, but it could be also connected to computer and used for making music arrangement. We could use this instrument. Uh, here is uh, probably Yamaha SX900, so, and here is uh, Korg PA1000 probably. So most digital stations, workstations or arrangers, depending how producers name those instruments, have this sound engine on board and they are hardware. So you are 100% sure about the reliability, there will be no crackles, dropouts and so on, because producers test the limits, they know the limits, and if they cannot apply more effects, they just, hey, you cannot apply more effects. Like my boss, uh, guitar effects, you, you add one effect, second, and, and, I want, and I'm trying to add another one, and he shows me, no, you cannot do it, because you are overloading the CPU the internal CPU of this hardware device. So the, there is no such problem like with the software. Here is a Mog Mini Tower. Mini Tower, yeah. So you can attach also MIDI and produce sound in here and taking it back somewhere else. So I'm showing you this example because not every instrument that produce sound, that is a sound engine, actual sound engine, need to have keys. It could be keyless, yeah, and, and it only requires MIDI data instead of physical keyboard. So it's smaller, a, a small box. Okay, now let's go to MIDI editing, because the previous comparison was about the sound engine. And, and we were discussed the advantage and disadvantage of sound engine. And now let's take a look on MIDI editing and making this arrangement, so putting everything layer by layer, putting notes, applying effects and making the final stuff. So working with notes, working with control commands like the tweaking filters and so on and so on. And if we are talking about MIDI editing, it's 100% sure that software, DLW software, the, the, the digital audio workstation, so this class of software is superior to anyone, anything else. Because this interface is super comfortable. You get keyboard, computer keyboard, you get mouse, you get click, clipboard, copy, paste, do a lot of things, keyboard shortcut, so, using the mouse and the keyboard, multiple screens, big screens, allows you to work in a perfect, in a perfect environment. So for sure, software, which are produced for years now, uh, has the best interface. You could take any software, it's on the market, there is a lot of possible options. Some people are more, um, you know, attached to this producer, some of them are using another one. It's your personal, you know, um, it's your personal cho choose, always, it's your, it's your personal choice. Um, but no doubtly, the software uh, MIDI editing is the best if you are talking about the ergonomic efficiency and so on and so on with very, very high and extended arrangements, we get a lot of possible views. We could zoom in, zoom out, hide some tracks, group some tracks. So there is no such a way, there's no way that in digital workstation, even with big screen, we could do this. Okay, 
uh, another advantages. It's super mobile. You take your laptop and you can do arrangement, I don't know, sitting on a garden or, I don't know, on the beach. Uh, software also um, works uh, with MIDI controllers, so you could play live some stuff. And, the, and, it, and it's, of course, it's not connected with uh, the sound engine. I mean, usually in this scenario, which I will show you in a moment, when we use MIDI controller and sound engine and DLW software, we got this minimalistic setup, 100% uh, software solution. So it works with MIDI controller, so you do not need to click the notes, actual notes. Of course, you can do it in step recorder or just click, 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 C chords, you are using piano rolls to produce the to produce the sorry uh, like in here this is piano roll all fs studio this is logic pro this is cubase uh, piano roll this is piano roll or of uh, ableton so you actually could click 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 or use a midi keyboard to play the phrase then use quantize and 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 some you know um, editing so software, if you buy a software, DLW software, it usually comes with some free software instrument with some VST. Uh, like I said, um, if you buy, um, for example, Cubase, you get Helion SE. It's their own sound engine VST. In FL Studio, there is a lot of Citrus, uh, Poison and, and more and more. Uh, sometimes if you buy, uh, for example, MIDI controller, you get for free a Blatton uh, Live, which is DLW, and Analog Lab, which is uh, sound uh, engine, VST, software sound engine. Uh, there are, of course, very limited versions to be, you know, uh, to be 100% honest. If you buy... Uh, a keyboard, MIDI keyboard or DLW and you got this LE or intro version, they are very limited in their functionality. You, for example, you cannot add more devices. There is, uh, there is limited number of uh, effects, tracks and so on and so on. But for start, for start, it is okay. But if you want to buy this super extended version production and, or something like this, you need to pay a lot, a lot much more than a hardware arranger sometimes because the software could be also very expensive. It, it is not true that a software is always um, cheaper. No, it's not true uh, because it is also a lot of work to create some software to, to pay. You, you are paying for knowledge, for know-how and so on. And a lot of programmers work. Uh, okay, so um, MIDI editing with uh, software, what are the disadvantages? Requires PC. Of course, you need to buy a computer to work with software. And you may say, hey, I have my PC, what's wrong? I have my MacBook Pro, whatever it's called. I just install it and play. Of course, yes, but with this uh, remark, with this notice that if you use this software for, uh, if you use this computer for everything, internet surfing, watching movies, for entertainment, for work, office work, whatever you, you, you call it, you may have the problems that I have mentioned uh, a few minutes ago about sound engine. Because the limitation of CPU and some software in a background can really affect the overall performance of your the workstation of your laptop. So my recommendation is to use the dedicated laptop. I mean, to have the laptop which is clean, uh, which has only a software uh, with the design, which is designed to be uh, music optimized for music. So no extra software in the background, communication, Facebook, whatever you have there, because it will always decrease the performance of your machine, of your hardware. Okay, so what else? The software, 
MIDI editing in a DLW requires audio interface. What is audio interface? I don't want to make some digression here, but basically the music card which is inside your laptop or inside your desktop PC is all is usually a very bad quality, which is not recommended for any, uh, let's call it, semi-professional work. Also, you need this to connect more physical devices. And to listen to high-quality music, you also use this MIDI interface. I will show you the di diagrams in a moment, but basically, uh, you need to buy laptop, you need to buy audio interface, and buy a software. So those three things you need to, you know, have to produce sound, use MIDI editing. Of course, with some scenarios, uh, with if we take a sound engine to the hardware, which I was talking about in the previous uh, movie, in a scenario number two, you don't need audio interface. There are solutions that where you don't need audio interface to work to, to make MIDI editing uh, in a in a software in a computer. Okay. Less reliable, software glitch, malware, upgrade problems, CPU limits, so I don't want to repeat myself. This problem always occurs and it doesn't matter if we are talking about sound engines, so, so generating sound using uh, software on a computer or just routing MIDI and making the mix, so you know, applying the structure, building the structure of your composition of your arrangement. So if we talk about it, it is always needs to be, you know, taken into consideration that your computer must be, you know, virus-free, uh, must be healthy, must be optimized, no extra software, unnecessary stuff, and so on and so on. So you need to take care about your computer, so it requires some technical skills. Okay, hardware DLW arranger. What this is actually is, it is possible to make an arrangement on a hardware, and what hardware just have such options? Yes. If you watch my channel for Yamaha PSR S975 or 670, you will find a lot of videos on building arrangements. So that such an instrument adver ad advertised as digital workstations as workstations or arrangers usually have multi-track recording MIDI. They have sequencers, they have step recording and the options to alter the recorded sound in the MIDI way. So you can actually do some stuff with the notes and control commands that you have used. But uh, there is always some limitation because as I said, the most, the, the best interface is on a computer. On a, deal, the, on a hardware solution, I will show you some examples like this. This is a fragment of my video when I was showing you the notes and altering the uh, recorded MIDI notes in a Yamaha PSR. Uh, this is uh, this is a Roland Phantom. Uh, it has also a ability to build the uh, patterns, then the groups over the patterns and then looping them inside the hardware. So it's like Ableton Live inside the instrument. So it's possible to have such a solution. And the another way the another way is to use like, like this groovy box circuit tracks from novation i believe which actually is a built-in sequencer so you could build up to two or more tracks of midi and send them back somewhere and play those notes using those pads in here so it, it is possible to do MIDI editing on a hardware, depending if it is a keyboard instrument, workstation arrangement, arranger, or a dedicated device for, you know, uh, this is actually also a synth inside, but uh, I was showing you this in here because it has a, the sequencer built in, so you, you could make some MIDI tracks on it and layer them and send them somewhere else for hardware or synth devices. Okay, so let's go back in here. Uh, what are the advantages? Well, we get all in one box. So if you have this Yamaha, this Korg, this Roland, you get this one box 
you get sound engine and the MIDI editing in one box and speakers, so you don't need a computer. It's a huge advantage. You don't need computer, you don't need audio interface, you don't need anything except this one device, which is of course <laughs> quite expensive, but yes, you can do it. It's plug and play. You don't need to install software, activate license. You don't need, you, you don't require any technical skills except how to use it. So you could of course check my tutorials and you will find how to use them. And the advantage is also like from the previous version when we were talking about Sound Engine, you have a lot of user and community help. So you can find how to do something. You know the limits. Uh, you don't have problems with upgrades, buying another licenses and so on and so on. So this is basically all in one box. Some of those arrangement keyboards has audio interfaces and built-in speakers. So basically they are designed to do what they are, are designed. So they're designed for sound generation and MIDI editing and final mix also. Okay, disadvantages. Uh, less friendly interface, which is obvious because using computer mouse and keyboard big screens is the best of the best. Limited uh, functions and available instruments. Yes, now basically if you buy this uh, keyboard, you need to carefully watch which features, which functions it have because there should they probably won't upgrade you. So they won't give you a firmware upgrade, maybe only for some um, problem fixing, but in general, the producers are not publishing new versions of firmware and adding a lot of new features. Um, instead, they are <laughs> releasing on a market new model, so they encourage you and forces you to buy a new one. Um, but um, the limits of functions is sometimes even, I mean, if you know what are the limits of your device, you just take it and use it for years. And there is no such a problem. Maybe I should switch to some another software. Maybe I've let down, maybe FL Studio, maybe Cubase. I don't know. This one has this option. No, you have one device you are working with. And when you realize that you need to upgrade to go somewhere higher and maybe some new interfaces has been released, you just need to solve the old one and buy a new one. Of course, there is also higher cost to buy because if we start with software and some free instruments, we could really uh, only need a few hundred dollars. But uh, if we are buying such a big workstation, which is capable of producing the whole arrangement, it is usually the top model of the line. It's called the professional models. So, and, and, they, and they cost much more. And of course the space, you need some space somewhere to produce and so on. Okay, so I was showing you it. This is some examples. So Blatton, FL Studio, Cubase, Logic Pro. I don't want to discuss pros and cons of each program. Actually, most of the functions are the same. They could receive MIDI, save MIDI, and put those MIDI data out somewhere. There is a lot of videos on my channel when I'm when I'm showing you examples with Cubase, with FL Studio, and soon there will be also videos with Ableton Live, uh, which is, in my opinion, the best for live performance because the interface is light and you easily can record loops and send them back and change the outputs. Um, Maybe I will create a video where I'm comparing FL Studio with a platon, so doing the same looping things and Cubase also. How much time it requires to prepare something on a, let's call it a live stage environment. Okay, so this is the examples of hardware MIDI. And now let's, let's go through the uh, live playing on keyboards. So mm, this is, as we have discussed the principles at the beginning, uh, live playing uh, is some kind of, you know, situation where you take your, your gear, when you take your rig, go to stage and play. And of course you could use the hardware solution, so one instrument and play, or you can use a 
software solutions, so laptop and some stuff. And we will discuss in a moment some examples, but uh, let's discuss the pros and cons. So super mobile. Of course, if you have the small MIDI keyboard and laptop, you putting everything in a backpack and the audio interface is not very big also. You get a lot of uh, knobs and pads. Uh, so you are very portable and you have a lot of options to tweak the sound using the knobs. Usually more than a, than usual keyboard arranger, but some of them also have a lot of them. Okay, disadvantages. You need MIDI controller. Yes, you need software instruments. So you need sound engine, some VST plugins. Maybe you have in DLW software, but of course you need to pay for it. If you want a higher, big version, you need to purchase them. Cheap MIDI controller is less comfortable to play. Yes, basically if you are piano player and you try to play something on something like this, it's cool for only electronic music, simple chord with one hand, sometimes bass line, with, but basically the number of keys is so limited and the size of keys that this is not very comfortable to play. But for, you know, simple melody on synth music when you're pressing chord and the arpeggiator is playing, it's okay. But it's, let me be honest, it's less comfortable to play than full-size weighted keys. Uh, so basically those, those are the disadvantage I am mentioned them all. And let's go to hardware arrangement. Keyboard is included inside your instrument, yes, because you just only need this one box. Uh, full size or mid size piano keys, depending on the instrument you have, uh, but stage pianos, they have full size keys, so it's really comfortable to play. You get a lot of keys, you get weighted keys in, in this most expensive models, of course, but not because not every um, arranger or stage piano, so the, the, the instrument which is designed to be on, on stage has the weighted keys. But there are models of arrangers, there are models of workstations with full size weighted keys. Uh, so another pro. They are all in one. Audio interface and speaker and instrument are included. Of course, they have output, so you can attach the external big speaker if we are talking about playing on a huge stage with a lot of audience. And they are plug and play, no setup. Disadvantages, higher cost to buy, usually require space, and they have poor mobility. So it repeated again. Okay, and now let's discuss sample configurations. Because we have talked about sound engines, pro, uh, pros and cons of software versus hardware. We're talking about MIDI editing versus software versus hardware. And you may be asking yourself if you <laughs> watch this video, which has now 52 minutes, you are maybe asking, what should I buy? Should I buy software or should I buy hardware solution? Because I still don't know. So here are some examples. Maybe they will be helpful to you know, make a decision. This is an example configuration of 100% software solution. 100% software, which means no hardware big keyboard and sound engine and MIDI editing and looping and everything is done on a computer. So what you need in this example, MIDI controller like this Arturia Mini Lab, you need a DLW software, for example, Ableton Live, which was added as a gift to this Arturia. It was included in my package. Software instrument like Analog Lab with 5500 presets included for free, but this is a limited version. You cannot edit them, which is at the beginning okay, but if you want to tweak some sounds, you cannot do it. And of course, a PC. I am using it with uh, Acer. Yeah. Acer laptop, Ryzen 5 CPU, 8 gigabytes of RAM, Windows 10. It's not a super performance laptop uh, for start, maybe, but the cost of this solution, uh, the key, the Arturia mm, controller, which this gift uh, gifted, I mean, for free DLW and soft VST instrument is 120 bucks. 
uh, for a laptop. So you will see the total N184 Scarlet audio interface is 800. But if you add this uh, studio monitors to it, you will increase $1,000 for sure. But it is also cheaper than buying, a, I don't know, a Roland Phantom 6, Yamaha PSR or Yamaha SX900 or Cork PA1000, which are the flagship arranger, or th they are not even super flagship. They are professional arranger, but not a flagship because for a Yamaha you get Tyros um, and there are other models. I don't know. I don't remember all of them. So please, sorry, th this video is not about it, but the cost is higher twice higher probably. This is how looks the 100% software solution which was uh, you know um, presented here. So we got computer, laptop with a Platon Live for example or any other DLW software. We got some plugins with it, software plugins, we got audio interface, we connect this audio interface to speakers and if thanks to using cable we are playing. Then we have the MIDI controller which is our Mini Lab. I maybe use this for here, and we f sending MIDI data to our software, and we are able to play live, to record some tracks, to do MIDI editing, and everything happen in a software. Pros and cons of such a solution. To summarize, you need to have a good class PC configured, optimized with no malware and software in the background that will consume your. CPU power. The key problem in this is the reliability and to be, you know, repeatability. So on each moment, the power, the available CPU power must be the same. Because if it vary in some condition, for example, you start a software for screen recording on live streaming and your software DLW freezes because now you have a lack of latency. There is a lot of problems with it and you need to be patient. But f well, let's wait for super summarize in a moment. Let's go to another solution. 100% hardware, sorry. 100% hardware solution. So basically you are buying a hardware workstation arranger. This example is Yamaha PSRS 975 because I personally own it and on my channel you can find a lot of videos when I'm doing such things like MIDI editing, making arrangement, multi-track recording and so on. So it has 69 keys and USB MIDI support which is super important. It has to be USB MIDI because without it you won't be able to connect it to external devices or DLW software. We got step recorder in song and style creator for MIDI editing and looping. Not every model has this feature, so you need to be paid because the cheaper model from this, for example, if you're talking about the Yamaha PSRE line, this educational line, then it they doesn't have the step recorder uh, and this MIDI editing features, so we won't be able to use it. We will need to choose this, let's call it professional. Um, professional models. You get 100 voices, drum kits, some memory for expansion pack and software for upgrading and installing those packs and stereo speakers. The cost where it was available but because now this model is discontinued was about $2,000. So as you can see even if we compare it to the speakers um, in the previous solution here with speakers, without speakers, it much cheaper. Okay, what are the other options? The other options are mixed solutions. I call them hybrid solution and personally I'm using them most of the time. In the previous video, if with three possible scenarios how to connect keyboard to computer, the scenario number two was the hybrid solution because I personally don't want to use a software synth. I mean, the biggest problem I have with the sound engine in a computer. But let's talk about this hybrid scenario. So basically, if your instrument with sound engine 
has the MIDI USB MIDI interface, you can connect it to your software and and feed with MIDI notes for uh, recording some tracks and then if you are playing those tracks you are not using the VST instruments from here because you are using this sound engine. And this example has been showed in my last video when I was using the Yamaha uh, and FL Studio to show you this. And basically with any DLW, with any uh, instrument, hardware instrument, it could be like this uh, Mog Minotaur or with keys or without keys depending on what do you have. Basically uh, you could always extend the you know let's call it features of your sorry uh, the features of your um, okay so here is synth or digital piano so you can extend the features of your instrument uh, of you can extend it to be convenient to edit MIDI and this scenario is very cool because the biggest lack in any hardware instrument that I have with making arrangement is this interface. It's not user friendly and sometimes it, very, it is very time consuming to produce sound. So the, if I was if I was asked and mentioned the biggest disadvantage of sound engine software or hard which would you like to choose, I would say use hardware for sound engine. And if we are talking about MIDI editing, I'm saying use computer, so use software for editing. Why? The whole video is about it basically, but sound engine is critical if we are talking about sound glitches, uh, dropouts, crackles and so on. So if you not prepare your computer uh, in a proper way and take care about the conditions will to be the same all the time you will force you will have these problems no doubt you will have problems with sound engine crackles and so on if you even watch some tutorials on youtube people are showing instrument they're switching presets and now there is problems with recording and then they have and again to you know um tweak the parameters of buffer size age of drivers usually is the place where you need to do some stuff but there is a lot of topics uh, updates and tips what to do you can update software change midi port reinstall operating system and so on and so on so there is a lot of problems with the sound engine mostly because software as the software if we're talking about editing it's very reliable it's not crashes because it's tested many years and and it's not a problem, but the most unstable thing for me personally on a software is the sound engine, the, the, the generation of a sound using sound engine, because there's a problem with latency if the buffer is too high or with crackles and dropouts if the buffer is too small, too shrink. Okay, so this hybrid solution actually takes the biggest disadvantage of keyboard of workstation arranger hardware arranger and you know transfer it outsource it into computer because you are using soft the engine sound from here samples voices from here but you are editing in here and this is my favorite solution it's called the hybrid solution scenario 2 and now super summary because we are passing one hour of the video oh my god so Software solution with MIDI controller, free, free DLW software and free soft instruments. You can take this solution for a start and when it will be good for you. It will be good for you if you are good with computers, yes. Because as I mentioned the previous, all the reasons, if we are talking about sound engine and MIDI editing, you need to install this software, configure. Take care about a lot of things. So if you are good in computers, you will be able to handle it. If you are patient with setup, it could be very annoying if you are tweaking with this latency, ASIO driver, buffer size, this conflicts, this problems. 
you are you want to play you have some idea in your head you want to play no still problem with asia i need to tweak this it could be really horrible so if you are patient take this solution <laughs> okay if you want to explore and an experiment and you know go with the modern uh, genres and so on this is also good for you because to be honest the hardware producers are always a year or two years back with the new stuff software could be you know published and sold on the market very fast so some kind of new sound maybe some new modern instruments are released faster so if you are open to new stuff maybe software is good for you uh, if you compose more than play for fun and life so basically if you most of the time if we talk about this domain at the beginning life versus studio production so if you produce more in studio so you have a you, you can you know and take one hour to configure your drivers and your software and 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 upgrade patches to operating system if you can allow you for it for you so mostly in a studio you can choose this one but if you're playing live you are playing on stage you need a reliable solution uh, you don't have time for doing it and it's very disturbing so remember uh, Maybe not remember, but you are, if you are more apt to modern styles, you also probably choose the software. And software is also cheaper than buying hard workstations, so it's good for start if you are starting with this hobby and you're not doing it professionally, you want to check if it's good for you. You don't need to spend a lot of money for hardware. And so... Of course, if you are expanding your skills, your your work, you could buy more sophisticated software. You could buy the full version of this VST free plugin, so you will be able to edit them. Of course, they the cost will rise, but it will be you know in a time uh, d divided, distributed in a time. And um, and of course, if you travel a lot with your gear, so the portability is good. The modern music is good. And if you are patient and more for studio production, then maybe consider software solutions. And maybe 100% software solutions if you do any, if the portability is your main goal. But if you need more reliability, consider this hybrid scenario. So, for example, use Ableton Live as DLW and your keyboard or uh, hardware synth as the uh, sound engine. Okay, and now let's summarize the hardware, let's call it Dove LAS solution. So you get one all-in-one device or two devices, maybe MIDI sequencer is external or looper, and you get this digital workstation or arranger device with keys mostly. So it is good for you if you don't feel good with computers, connections, setup, and so on. If you play more live on stage, so... You just or you just play for fun. Uh, I don't, you know, <laughs> I, I cannot imagine that in my, uh, you know, uh, main uh, daily room there will be a computer, a lot of cables and so on. But digital piano looks perfectly. It's nice, simple, enable, play for fun, for enjoyment, for, you know, dinner and meeting with friends, whatever. So with family, singing and so. So it's really plug and play, click, play on a stage, live, in a home, for fun, whatever you have. You don't need to, you know, making these connections, cable upgrade, and so on. So, if you need something simple, reliable, you don't like very changes and experimenting, you don't need new voices every week, you just can take your grand piano sound and just play. And if you play and or compose more conservative music style also, because strings are strings, pianos are pianos, you don't need super new modern house techno whatever the music genres modern stuff and sounds are because the more modern then then you need to buy more vst plugins <laughs> okay so the arranger workstations are more expensive but i think especially if you are in conservative uh, music genres they could be used for years without problems 
without the I don't know problems that they will need an upgrade because they won't be a necessary upgrade but if in the software solution for example after one or two or three years your laptop needs to be replaced because the software is more uh, CPU demanding and you won't be able to do this so if you like all-in-one simple solution also this hardware doubtless is for you okay so I think it's all for now it is the most the longest video on my channel but if you like this channel if you watch this video in a whole you're a great guy or a great lady so please don't forget to give me a like and subscribe if you're not subscribing it and if you want me to explain some you know scenario or you I maybe I missed something because it, this video is quite long but maybe some features one wasn't explained uh, in super detailed way please give me a comment share your thoughts share my video thanks for watching it was BB Walker see you later